Welcome to the KIPS Personal Trainer Application Podcast. My name is Tyler Valencia and I'm the president of KIPS and Time to Train Fitness. We have a special one for you in this episode. We have Amy Nicotera to talk about some great ideas for creating secondary revenue streams for your business, but also really growth. There's these points in your career where you might think, how are these people doing that? How are they creating online courses? How are they growing in the online space? And Amy's doing all that right now. Amy, first of all, thank you for coming on the podcast. Thank you for having me. So to kind of kick this off and set the tone for the podcast, we'll say, can you give listeners an idea of what the E5 Collective is? I would love to. E5 Collective is a new fitness format, and I've created an online course to support that format. And it's basically a really um, innovative, smart structure that trainers can follow and use with their clients one-on-one or in a small group setting, or it's also great for large groups as well. And you might be curious about the name in itself, E5 Collective. What the heck does that even mean? Well, Other than being a snazzy title, uh, the E stands for explore, and the five represents five segments of the format, and each of those five segments is named with an action word. They're all verbs. They're all action-oriented things. So we bring those actions to life through um, specific movement strategies in each segment. And so the idea is that People who take the class and enjoy the experience or the session, they're just exploring these actions and um, becoming more open to what the whole experience has to offer. Gotcha. Gotcha. Something I want to point out with it, and it's something that I've seen in the marketing as well is, and I think a lot of it pulls from your background in education, your experiences. Do you feel like you are trying to create something new in that space with all the, we'll say with the Viper education, the uh, Institute of Motion? Are you trying to incorporate some of that as well? Definitely. So the whole premise um, behind E5 Collective is to create something that's really, you know, smart and well, well structured, Mm -hmm. but it meets trainers and instructors and coaches where they are. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things that I'd love to share. Number one, the, the format itself is based on four scientific ideas and that's variability training. So this idea that we should work at different intensities, hard, you know, not hard, steady Mm -hmm. state, you know, interval, the whole gamut. We should work at different intensities. We should also move in different directions. We should move in different planes of motion. We should move in different positions and challenge ourselves in odd positions Mm -hmm. with and without an external load. So basically with our body weight and also with other tools that provide resistance. So variability training, yes. Um, The second big scientific anchor is cognitive health. Mm. We train the brain. E5 Collective integrates specific strategies that research supports actually trains our brains and fosters cognitive function and improves it. We also did a lot of research on play. And we know that play really means enjoyment, right? And the research supports the fact that if people are actually enjoying their experience, they're more likely to make a long-term lifestyle change. And that's really what we're going for. And then the, the last anchor is that of mindset. And it's the idea that we want to train the body, but we want to train the mind, not just as far as brain training goes, but in our mental and mental health, right? Or our mindset, our perspective, our outlook. We know people struggle with that now. So this whole E5 Collective format is designed to really foster great physical movement, but also help us really improve how we look at ourselves, how we see ourselves, how we um, see ourselves as you know capable when it comes to obstacles or challenges or the uh, situation where we might be out of our comfort zone. We want to train to be comfortable being uncomfortable. So yes, long answer, but mm-hmm. I am pulling from all of my education as mm-hmm. far as what I know about perspective and 
and actually mental wellness yeah. and the physical body, all the training that I've done with like Institute of Motion and putting it in a package that's really smart, structured and innovative so that instructors and coaches and trainers can just play. They can do the format as one whole experience or they can plug and play based on what their client needs in that moment. And I'll get into the specifics of the five phases in a, in a minute. But I do just want to mention too, I talked about meeting trainers where they are. Mm -hmm. um, I think if w one thing we've learned over the past you know, 18 months or two years is that we, we can't always rely on that brick and mortar being there. And yep. as a trainer, what kind of tools do we have, right? So instead of creating something where a trainer needs to go out and buy 20 sandbells or, <laughs> you know, 14 vipers to do a small group training session, how, how can I meet you where you are with what you have already? So mm -hmm. there's no barrier to entry. So I, the cool thing about E5 Collective is we do use a piece of equipment, but it's whatever one you want. Mm. I create programming for various pieces of equipment. So right now we have programming for one dumbbell, two dumbbells, a, a mini loop band, which is cheap, portable, and super accessible. Mm -hmm. um, programming with a Dynamax med ball, Hyperware sand bell, the Viper Pro. So things that trainers, tools that trainers already have can be used with this format. And I, I know sometimes we struggle with programming as trainers, like what the heck else do we do with this thing? Well, awesome. Like I'm here for you. I got you. Yeah. Um, I've got lots of programming for you. So yes, I am pulling from all my experience and creating this really unique package from my perspective that I think is going to um, help more people move and not just entertain fit people who already go to the gym with something new. They can do that too, for sure, but also allow trainers and coaches to use what they already have. Like you could do it in a park, you can do it in a school gym, you can do it in, you know, wherever you might be to help your, your people move. And, and that's the whole idea. Keep it simple and minimal equipment. I love it. I love it. I, honestly, I think that the movement space and the integration with clients is still an untapped area. I feel like we see more certifications coming out in that area. But from my experiences with working with individuals that do come from the Institute of Motion or do work with Viper Pros, it's such a fascinating approach and it makes sense scientifically, but also with the application part. Uh, my experiences with trying to integrate the Viper and classes, one of my favorite things is people just look at it and, and either a guy wants to do a log press with it or people just don't know what it is. Trainers, I always make a joke when I bring them to sessions about it's a piece of equipment in the corner that nobody really knows that's collecting dust. And uh, occasionally somebody pulls it out, but there's so many options with it. And it's really just learning more about it. And it's endless with what you can do, in my opinion. And I think you have that same approach to it, but I really do like the variability part. I think that really speaks to hopefully the future of fitness and exercise, because we got so stuck in this high intensity interval training, high intensity power training, this CrossFit mindset where clients think that I have to be barely walking out of the gym in order for it to be a good session. And not all these sessions have to be like that. Wouldn't you rather come back? Wouldn't you want your clients to come back to you the next day, the day after that, and have some consistency rather than looking at potential injuries or them being in their mindset that they can't walk and therefore it's a good workout. So I like that you're talking about these, you're integrating them and you're providing this as education for other fit pros. Yeah, so. I, I agree with you. I do not ever want the reputation for being the hardest trainer, the one that <laughs> made me puke. Like why? Yeah. Right. I want the reputation that 18 year olds can do my workout and 74 year olds can do my session yeah. and they both walk out feeling confident, challenged and really successful and they come back for more. Yeah. And I think that's what we're, you know, hopefully moving towards in this industry is really promoting longevity, not just mm -hmm. this like, okay, so I, I puked one day last week because I did this hard workout. Well, I'm not going to do it again for, <laughs> you know, tell me who goes back for more. Yeah. You know, what do you do that four times a week? You just keep doing that. Like it's, that's not 
that's <laughs> not the recipe for success Agreed. or long term, you know, choices. Like people aren't going to keep that up forever. They're just not, Agreed. right? So we want to f- make people feel refreshed. We want to be smart with our programming. And I, I get that that's challenging sometimes, but we want to really have ch- programming that is well-rounded, is science-based, and it works to, it's effective in that we're gonna look better, we're gonna move better, we're gonna get results, and we're also gonna feel better and be able to do it for the long-term, not just the short-term. Agree, agree. It's something that I've kind of played with in my head, even this week, was that I just wanna hit singles this week with my workouts. I was leading up to a competition recently and I was trying to hit home runs all the time with my workouts because I needed to, I needed to get certain things done, but getting back into the swing of it, create, getting back into my consistent routine. I'm okay with singles right now. If it was, it's not, if it's not a super challenging workout, if I'm not super sore the next day, all good. I still went in there. I did something, moved around, have my body feeling good. Yeah. I'll take that all day. And I think that that's something for people to think about is just hit a single for that first workout back. Just yeah. get that blood pumping, get moving. Yeah, that's great. Awesome. I'm sure you want to go back the next day and yeah. you're not like, oh man, what, what was I thinking? So it's uh, it's something to think about with with workouts and all that kind of stuff. Something that I kind of want to move into now with a question for you. And then it kind of sparked this week. Some people might know that I do some consulting for the, the event company called Fitness Fest. And I actually saw you in the background of one of the photos. It was one of the sessions. And I was like, hey, I know that that girl back there. And I know uh, I'm going to ask her this question in the podcast because it's interesting It that one, I know that you've done a plentiful of education certifications. You have a lot of experience to pull from. And it's great to see other fit bros taking other courses to grow, consistently learn. What was some of the homework that you did to create your E5 collective format? Well, I love that question. So thanks for asking it. Yeah. (laughs) I think that the day we stop learning or being open to new ideas is really a sad one. So I don't ever want to see that day. So personally, I would say I've been in education. I've been a high school educator for about seven years. Um, And we always want to create lifelong learners, a little catchphrase, but I really pride myself on being one of those. So kind of have two little answers or two directions here with my answer. Um, Number one, personally, I, I really want to stay educated. I like to see what other people are doing. I think it's really important to be open-minded and, and instead of, um, always thinking that we have to know better than the other person or our way is better or that can't be, you know, better or useful. I think it's really important to just think about adding tools to the toolbox because when we service our our members and provide sessions for them, we we meet a lot of different people. And I think a really great quality of a trainer or instructor is to be able to reach and to touch a variety of people, not not literally, of course, I'm just saying like be able to relate to them and adapt Mm -hmm. to them. And the more things that we're exposed to and the more different styles of education that we hear and see, um, it kind of adds to our own repertoire of how to work with people and also how we, there's always room to grow. There's always room to improve in some way. And if it's not something that you're going to kind of take away from it, it's going to spark another idea in your head. So for me personally, those are some of the benefits of just always trying to, I like taking other people's sessions. I, mm-hmm. I, I always want to learn from whatever other people are doing. Mm-hmm. But it, when it comes to my online course specifically, I intentionally took a variety of online courses. I have taken live webinars. I've taken sessions that have lasted over, you know, a six months period of time wow. where you meet once live and you do a lot, some work on your own. I have taken, you know, the weekend session where somebody is literally live talking to you Mm -hmm. and you're just there and it's like a live session, but you're all on Zoom together. And I've taken some self-paced courses where someone was just sitting in a dark corner talking for hours. (laughs) It was painful. So the information is always great for the most part, but it really taught me that 
or allowed me to understand and take away what I want to do with my course and what I definitely don't want to do. So within the means that I have or had to work with, what could I do to make this as adult learner friendly as possible? Mm-hmm. And you know, most people don't want to hear somebody just talk on and on for hours, but how can we really break it up and make it as engaging as possible, even though it's self-paced learning? So I I think there's benefits to always learning for yourself and personal growth. And when you're doing a project, I think, you know, it's like a recon, right? You got to go out there and see what's (laughs) out there and see what kind of thing you're going to make based on some other experiences that you've had. Yeah, I like that a lot. And that continual growth mindset, the continual uh, looking for ways to improve. I think that that's something that I feel like I've talked about a lot with different guests, whether I'm a guest on a podcast or that coming on to the podcast with either Kips or Fitness Fest. And it's something that you you, you see, it's a, a, a common trait amongst fit pros that are going yeah. to that next level. They're continually pushing. They understand that their way is not the only way. There's so many options out there that can can push you along the way, that can help you learn and keep you pushing and, by, and thinking outside the box that you don't always have to do the same thing, that you don't always have to stick with the template. You can go off in your own way. So I like hearing those types of things with, and go ahead. You mentioned growth mindset, and I just want to jump in and say, you know, that's a huge part of E5 Collective. It's because, nice. you know, helping people understand what growth mindset means and how do you change your mind yeah. how do you how do we face adversity like in the on the daily in every aspect of our life you know e5 collective is a fitness experience but it's also we work on these action words and i'll share them with you now it seems like a good time mm-hmm. prepare endure engage push and recover and they're all actions that we have to take to be more fit and healthy but they are like so important in every aspect of our life if we can't endure bad situations or suffering right Mm -hmm. if we're too soft per se or you know we we tend to find that maybe uh you know, adversity comes and we cower. How do we learn to be confident in our ability to take on adversity, to change our perspective that what if the best possible scenario happens or what if sucky things happen? Okay, Mm -hmm. how do we deal with it? I'm wearing a shirt now that says minimal drama. (laughs) And I use that a lot. Like our choices on how we respond to situations, not just in the training session, but in life dictate a lot of how we feel, how our body operates, how, how we you know, deal with others in relationships. So it's, I'm, I'm all about that growth mindset. And I think the more people we can touch with the message mm-hmm. of you know, minimal drama, open-minded, try your best, try new things, I think it's so powerful. Agree, 100% agree with that. So continuing on with this, growth mindset and the application of it, a good question to ask now, since I'm looking at your background and it's a very professional studio that it looks great, looks phenomenal. What and how has your business changed, adapted over the last year? Well, I was COVID collateral, (laughs) as were many other fit pros, I think. Mm -hmm. Um, I was working for a large chain company. Gym and I had a corporate position um, in program development mm. for the company as far as developing group fitness formats. Mm. So they weren't really into innovating and they were trying to probably survive. So I lost my job and quickly had to decide, you know, what I what I wanted to do and where I wanted to go from there. So, like many other fit pros, I hopped online. I tried my hand at Zoom. And mm-hmm. where I was doing some online virtual workouts and it turned into something that I thought, you know what, this is actually awesome. I go down in my basement, I teach class. I, I don't have to drive. I, you know, people who were taking classes started loving it because they realized they weren't fighting traffic. Mm-hmm. They, you know, there were so many pluses to it and they realized that they could actually get a really great workout and a variety of workouts with minimal equipment. Yeah. And so I actually started, I launched a virtual studio. So it's a, it's my vision in my head was to create a brick and mortar, but online, right? Mm-hmm. So have a full class schedule where people could come in if they wanted and t- 
record. That was how I was going to do it in the beginning. Um, and it was a mix of live and recorded sessions. And throughout this past year, I've added a content library. So right now I have a, a library of over 400 different workouts. There's like over 17 different formats. Um, so it's been great. So I've created this studio space, as you were referring to, you could see it. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I created something that was kind of clean. It was great for filming. I tried to keep it professional, especially since I was going to charge money for this. I wanted people to feel like they were getting something that they paid for. I wasn't just like in my pajamas in my living room with my dogs climbing on me, trying to teach them how to work out. So at least you can get the look. <laughs> the look is the first start, mm -hmm. uh, first step. And so I launched this virtual studio and then, you know, having had some downtime with, you know, the whole pandemic, I did, like we talked about before, I, I took a lot of online, you know, courses mm -hmm. and I was developing this in my head. I had an idea of what I wanted to do. I knew what I wanted to create. And so over a year I uh, probably could have done it faster, but I did it myself. You know, you have to research, you have to put in the work, you have to do all the research, you have to write the manual, write the script, figure out how you're going to film yourself if you're not going to have somebody else film you, you know, the whole thing. So I have this, I kind of have two things going at one time, my virtual studio and my other E5 collective kind of format, which online course and a membership platform. And they support each other because you can be a member or a consumer and just want to take E5 Collective. And it's one of the classes that I teach regularly on my schedule. And also if you're a fit pro or a trainer and you want to try it out before you actually take the course and kind of see a little bit of what the structure is all about, you can hop online and try a class before you, you know, commit to the, to the course. So yeah. Yeah, that's how I, that's what I, what forced me to, in a good way, make a lot of changes and just take, take some risks and lean in. I have right now, I'll be honest, Tyler, I have no idea what's going to happen. <laughs> <laughs> I dig it. I dig it. Something that you hinted at, but I'll just flat out say it, that people, you got to clean up your space, clean up your uh, space yeah. when you are going to film, when you're going to record or you're going to stream clean it up, make it look good. It's one of those things where I was blown away. I thought she, that Amy was in a, a studio that she was renting space somewhere, but I'll say, and I think she's fine with it, that it's in her basement. And I would, I would have not known unless she told me that it is beautifully painted. She's got a great mural in the back, super clean. And it's one of those things where if you are charging people and people and you want other opportunities in the virtual space, you got to do that. You can't make it look like you're in your living room. You got your couch in the background. You got all this stuff going on. People are, are going to know that. And even though there's a degree of it that, okay, this is clearly not a professional studio. This doesn't look like it's an infomercial. It, people will want to pay if you are taking the time to make yourself look professional. If you are yeah, a business... I think that's how you build your brand too. You know, yeah. for people that are listening that might have worked with me before, they know I always like to do the right thing and do it the right way. And mm -hmm. when I proofread things, it's not out of, I'm not coming from a place of judging you. I'm just yeah. like, let's just do the right. Let's get the best product possible, yeah. you know, out there. And I, I don't do that, you know, now instead of doing it for other companies and trying to create the best possible product and being a little nitpicky with the details and making sure things look right and read right and, you know, represent you well. Now I'm doing it for myself. So, you know, it's in a way it's kind of refreshing. So I appreciate those things and I'm glad that obviously you do too, but I do think it brings, you know, a level of professionalism to yep. whatever you're presenting or working with. And if you take it seriously, people are going to really, they, they understand and they feel, um, they can tell basically. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, and this is just a small joke, but I've have <laughs> interviewed, I, I can't even tell you how many instructors I have for my company time to train for potential instructors to teach. And it just kind of blows me away sometimes when I tell them, I, I just want to see your filming space. I want to look at, it. I want to see what the options are. And sometimes it just looks like it's a bedroom. And I'm just like, 
you, you don't want yeah. to get up those books on the side. You wanted me to see your lunch. Is that, is that what yeah. you wanted me to see? And it just a, it's it, in my mind, it becomes an immediate no. And I'm too nice to say just flat. No, like I, I just can't do that. <laughs> but, uh, I'll uh, help you work on that. You just say, no, it's not going to work in big smile. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll gladly go on for another 15 minutes. Just trying not to say be mean, but um, <laughs> that's just me. Um, with your space i mean did you have to learn anything about filming lighting what what was your process with that yeah well good question fortunately i have had um a fairly significant amount of experience filming whether mm. it's workouts or releases for other companies or mm. education for other companies so i kind of know that we want good lighting and i know yeah. kind of the basic shot that we're looking for um, I did a lot of research. I've reached out to colleagues and said, hey, your sound was great on that webinar or whatever. What are you using? Mm -hmm. And I don't assume I know it all. So I've got some good tips from colleagues. And I also feel like within the last year and a half, I have Googled more. How do I get my camera connected to my computer? How do I record blah, blah, blah. Any question that I have, you just Google it and yeah. you find a YouTube video that walks you right through it. So there was a lot of that happening. Some of it was kind of hit or miss. I definitely got better. I got my, I fine tuned it. Um, and I've had the privilege and opportunity to present for some virtual conferences where you do have kind of semi pros on the other end, looking at your lighting. And I, I always take advantage of that. I'm like, Hey, any suggestions by the way, about my lighting, where should this be? And so I get feedback from those experiences as well, but you know, a little learning curve. I, and sometimes you know how it is. There's, there's always some technical thing. Once you have it down, you're like, crap, now I can't hear somebody, yep. you know? And you're like, ah, it's always something. But oh, yeah. I, I think that's, you know, that's life and you roll with it to a certain degree, but I think you have to use your resources, you know, ask other people what they're doing, how they're doing it. People want you to be successful for yeah. the most part hopefully you're around people that want you to be and ask questions and you'll you can figure it out you can actually do it agree agree that's one of the reasons why i always say go on youtube i i am a big youtube fan i go on youtube a lot and that's part of actually our business with time to train and even kips with uh the content we release through youtube and with virtual well i'm going to use virtual training as an example here I mean, even this, in the last week, I've watched stuff that just to hopefully improve my sound for workouts. And it's a, just a continual resource that you can utilize because there's so much out there. Uh, one of the examples I've used in the past was when I started streaming with Time to Train, what the videos that I was watching, they weren't coming from the fitness area. They were coming from churches, people at, at churches, and they were streaming their um I forget services. Like, their services. There you go. That's a, thank you for that. For that yeah. right there. And it's one of those things where they are, they have it down because potentially they've already been doing it for a while. So yeah, well, I'm going to learn from them. I'm going to pick up pieces and then I'm just going to go apply it for time to train. So it's a great resource for anybody. And there's so much out there, no matter what the topic is, website development, your audio, your lighting, your filming, so many people create tutorials and they have these super in-depth items where if you are a visual learner, yeah, you could follow right along with it. You can have another screen up, you can have the item out and you're like, wow, I got it now. And it's just practice. That's practice, what I did. Practice. Yeah, I literally just was like, okay, what cable? Pause, get, it, yeah. get the cable, <laughs> stick it in this hole. Okay, pause, stick it in the hole. Like literally, like that's how I, I got going. Yeah. And then once you, you know, it's like anything, it's a little bit daunting at first, but if you just kind of take it step by step and you know, ask questions and, you know, be open to learning. You can, you'll get it. Yeah. Oh you get yeah. It. You get it. And, and talking, talking about getting stuff, I feel like you, you get branding, you get your marketing, you get the, that you got to be continually improving with it and with your brand now. So you're wearing a t-shirt that's branded. You got your logo in the back. You have all these items that go with what you're trying to promote, which is phenomenal. And that's one of the areas that fit pros struggle in. They either have this idea in their head that they're too old for it, or they don't, there's too much to learn, or I can have somebody else pop in to help me with this stuff, or they don't pay enough for that, that service. And they end up with something that they don't like. What is some advice you have for fit pros in the marketing realm? Well, I I'll tell you this whole project and my brand is just me, 
But behind me is an awesome marketing and graphic designer girl, Mm -hmm. friend of mine that I've had since like 2000, maybe 10 I met her, 2008, nine, somewhere in there. And she has made me everything from like postcards to my websites. She's amazing. So I think find somebody who gets branding like where the message matches the brand, the branding on your social media graphics matches what you're trying to, you know, promote your, your constant contacts or MailChimp emails that go out. They should all have like a consistent message. And I only get that really because she screams in my ear a lot about it and I understand it and people comment on it all the time. And I'm grateful for that. So I think you've got to find yourself some a good graphic designer or a good, you know, marketing person. Sometimes they have, some of them do more than one thing in that area, but find yourself somebody good who can help you with that. And it's going to cost you a little bit. You know, you're, you you can't expect to have awesome stuff if you don't know how to do it Mm -hmm. and not pay anybody for it, unless you're going to barter maybe services, which is an option, which I would say try to. But I think you have to realize if you want to level up, you we don't like to be taken advantage of as trainers Mm -hmm. and i think we have to remember some of these other kind of freelance types jobs like we've got to give due respect to them as well so i think you've just got to learn like when you got to bite the bullet and pay for something and and it pays off and i know a ton of people try to kind of put their own websites together and then this doesn't work that doesn't work sometimes the effort that you have to put into that's just not your wheelhouse is you're better off just saying, okay, guess what? That's not my jam. And I don't really have time to learn how to program everything or whatever. I'm going to ask for some help. Whereas other things, maybe you can figure out for yourself, like, you know, putting something on an online platform or whatever it is. But I think the important takeaway is get help. Yeah. You know, if you, like pay for it, get help. If you want to be professional, the people who look professional and are doing bigger things, they're, they're getting it done. And it's not just because they're sitting in their living room by themselves. There's, there's somebody with them, even if it's just one other person in my case <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. and a team of supporters. Yeah. There's two parts I want to comment on. The first one being, I feel like I was almost talking or you were talking to me and I'm just like, yeah, I feel like I've, I've said this a million times with <laughs> keeping the brain inconsistent. And it's amazing with some of the side consulting I've, I've do and have done when companies don't have their own color wheel or their color palette and they don't integrate it into their their marketing or into their newsletter and those things those subtle things they they make big impacts you're not just using random colors like the color palette that just comes in whatever newsletter that you're using you're using your colors you're keeping your branding consistent across all platforms to make it look and be professional so i I loved hearing that because i can't tell you how many times i've said those yeah well it makes a difference and people notice and yeah. you like branding is more than a logo. People think I need a logo and you just slap <laughs> that on everything, but okay, maybe that's a start, but there's a lot more to it. And that's just admitting that you don't know everything about that area. <laughs> mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And w- one of the things that I like too was about you, you pay for what you get and it stuff does cost money. And I, in other podcasts, I'm trying to think back now, I have mentioned the use of, freelancers or even things like Fiverr, but there is a caveat of it. If you're paying for services that are cheaper and they're not your wheelhouse, you will potentially get what you pay for. And that might not be what you wanted. And unless you know what you're trying to express and what you're trying to get out of it, it's going to make it a headache. So be, I'm trying to think of the best way to say it, try to be smart with it and understand Yeah, I'll just jump in if you don't mind. I I think you have to realize like what areas you can skimp on Mm -hmm. and what ones are worth the money. I'll give you an example. My online course, I I was like, how do I video myself (laughs) in my basement with a teleprompter? I mean, I Mm -hmm. literally had a teleprompter app on an iPad. Mm -hmm. I bought some kind of iPad teleprompter holder gimmick online, Mm -hmm. figured out how to film myself. I had a mic, the lav, you know, hooked up to my phone, used my phone camera, the whole thing, figured out how to do it. I saved a lot of money not getting that professionally filmed. Is it awesome? No, but I've had some, a lot of people look at the course and be like, hey, this is really well done. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I skimped there, but 
where have I spent? Well, I've spent on my marketing and my branding, and I've also spent on um, recording the content. I was going to just record the content in my basement at first, and then I realized that if people are going to pay for a subscription membership to E5 Collective and become a member, I, I want to present some high quality product, right? So I pay for the professionally filmed content. So I think the point is you've got to learn where where you can pinch the pennies and mm -hmm. where it's worth spending, what you can do yourself that's okay to do yourself, and then w when you really have to turn to a pro. I love it. I love it. The, uh, and I do want to add a comment in there for people listening that realize this is somebody that that is in the open market with you, that this is the level that they are putting out there. And Amy's providing solid advice across this whole podcast episode for you to take apply, because if you are late to the game with it, you can still get into it. You can still get into virtual. I have seen across Facebook people's commenting, um, oh, I am late to the game with virtual training. Oh, I definitely think that's, late. yeah, I, you're definitely not. And you know what we have to remember? More than half of America is still not moving on a regular yes. basis, people. Yeah. Like the clients are out there. Like it's up to us to be creative and how we engage and how we reach out. And I, I really think that that's the challenge. But if we're working, we're there's plenty of people who need help moving every yes. single day. Yeah, to kind of finish off that thought, thought right there too. Even though I'm saying that Amy is very good at what she's doing. She's crushing it there are still so many people that need help. And there, there is plenty of business out there for you to take, yes. to think about. That's why I would say that thing even goes with the mindset part of what Amy was talking about earlier and realizing that sometimes those thoughts get stuck in there that you think, oh, I can never do that. I can, I can compete with Amy on this. And you don't think that you have to compete with her. There's plenty of people out there that need help. And that's why we get into this business. We get into the business to help others, help them get healthier, help them move and be more consistent in their workouts, all these items. And to have that different almost switch in your mind that, oh, I can, instead of thinking that I need to compete, that I can learn from these yeah, individuals. And think of, I like to think in terms of and instead of or, yeah. right? Like, and we can do all these things. Plus, you know, not everybody's going to like my style, Yeah. you know, and I'm, that's okay. Who cares? Because you're out there and they're going to like your style. Yeah. And I think there's, you know, I heard a great saying, a little off topic, but it's a great phrase. It says, it's everyone is someone else's weirdo, right? <laughs> so there's just like different strokes, different folks. There's yeah. plenty of us who are in the business with our unique personalities and skills and gifts. And there are plenty of people out there that need us. And it's just kind of finding the right fit. But I, I, I really feel like we got to get beyond the competition and just realize yes. we've got a big, big ocean to work with. Yeah, agree. Agree. Well, then to switch gears here a little bit. And it goes off of kind of how we met. We met at a conference and chatted about what you're doing, all that kind of stuff. And you've been shared a little bit about where you are with your business and with individuals out there looking at going to the conferences and getting on the speaking circuit and those kinds of things with yourself now, with getting the word out there. Because I think this kind of goes into like the business side now of where you're trying to push into 2022. I almost wanted to say 2021 again, but uh, <laughs> what are some of the goals that you're looking at now with E5? collective going on the speaking circuit getting the name out there mm -hmm. well i you know i feel like i have these two legs to my business so with my own studio i've been i've been doing a lot of more kind of trying to grow it in the community mm -hmm. and so that's kind of one side as far as e5 collective goes it i've made a commitment to be at certain conferences um, throughout the next year. I'm applying to be at them. I'm, I'm budgeting to see whether I can, you know, afford a booth space at some of these expos or trade shows. Mm -hmm. I have that calendar in front of me. I'm doing what we're doing right now. I'm networking. I met yeah. Tyler. Tyler has a podcast. Tyler, can I be on your podcast? Yep. Literally just like that. So I think <laughs> we never say no for the other person. My grad school professor taught me that. Never say no for the other person. So ask, ask. You meet people, find out what they do, you know, see where they're at. I, I'm trying to make more of an effort to network, mm -hmm. um, to get my name out there. I've also hired uh, someone to work with me with PR. And it's just 
little, no big contract, no big commitment. We're just going to see how it goes. Um, but with specific goals of getting E5 Collective out there, getting my name out there a little bit more. And, you know, again, it's, I, I might know a lot of people at a lot of gyms, but there's a lot of people that I don't know. Yeah. And I'm going to try to use every avenue I can to try to make my, set myself up for success. I love it. That goes with opportunities. There are opportunities out there for a lot of individuals in the industry. And I want to comment on the podcast, what you mentioned about, you just reach out to me and boom, that's, I think it was honestly last week that you just emailed yeah. me and it was like, okay, boom, let's do it. And I will say that if you have a friend that does a podcast, they're probably in the same area where they need guests. It's hard to podcast and stay consistent with it. So if you know somebody and you want to get some free marketing, yeah, reach out to them. It's great for your business. You get links back to your website, your social media, you get entered into a new audience. It's a great way to network, grow your business, and there's no cost to it often. I don't think I've only had one person ever ask if they were getting paid for it. And I, but other than that, no, it's it's free. It's a great way. It's such yeah. a great way to grow your business that way. Uh, yeah, well, we're getting to the podcast takeaways and this is the part where I tell the same story every time, just in case it's a new learner. And with the podcast takeaway, I got it from a person on Twitter. His name, I believe, is Iron Cowboy, and he has the documentary. I think it was on Amazon Prime on their app. It was about how he did 50 Ironmans in 50 states in 50 days. Insane. I couldn't believe it when I watched it, but Great. insane. And with this question, he was asked something similar on Twitter about Ironman competitions. And so, the question he was asked was, what are three myths about doing Ironman competitions? Amy's not obviously going to answer that, but what are three myths? Hey, about I've done the- an Ironman. I did one, okay? <laughs> That's, so then you definitely know more than me in that area. It, I can uh, Kudos to you, first of all. I think people that do those are that insane. Um, the dedication. Let's not talk about what you do, all right, then? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what are three myths about the fitness industry? Three myths about the fitness industry. Yes. Well, I think um, from a coaching perspective, maybe the idea that I could never be an instructor. Sometimes I hear that like, oh, I could never stand up in front of people and, Mm -hmm. you know, talk to them or get them to move. Mm -hmm. I think that we really, if you're passionate about something and you come from a place of, I want to just help you and share, you'll be surprised about what you're capable of. So I think that one myth that I can't do it or I can't make an online course or create one, or I'm not good enough. Those are all like self, you know, self doubt and they go nowhere. That's a myth. You can, you can really figure out anything you want to. You can try anything you want to, if you just put your mind to it. Um, another fitness myth I would say is that, you know, it's, it's not all glory. You know, you might be listening to this podcast and Tyler's talking me up saying, Amy's got it going on. And, you know, it's not, I'm not making bank yet. I'll, I'll admit it, right? I'm, I'm growing, but it takes a lot of work. It's, you know, even if you're a fit pro and you go to conferences and you see somebody on stage and you're like, oh, I want to be a presenter. It's not that great. I mean, you're typically these people are working for other companies. I, I don't know anybody who's just like rolling in the dough because they go present at fitness conferences. Um, I mean, it's fun, but they do it because they love it. And that's that's the thing. So mm-hmm. I think the myth is that there's this grandeur behind all these people that you see. Um, and it's not always grand. It's, it's a lot of sweat equity that goes into it. And there's mm-hmm. a lot of research and preparation and a lot of hard work and effort. So... Um, don't be too intimidated by just because somebody's up on the stage, you know, that everything's great in their world. It's a lot of work. So yeah. if you want to be there, awesome. But, you know, it's it's not like everybody's getting their big break because they're presenting at the local show. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I think one more myth is that, and I don't know if it's really even a myth, but I want to leave with this message. Um in a lot of industries, people are very cutthroat. And I feel like I've had experiences where there might be little groups of people in, in any industry and you, the fitness conference world, you kind of see the same people around. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, in general, I'm going to say in general, most of us really want 
everyone to do well. And that's part that goes back to E5 Collective. It's like a movement, right? And in my E5 Collective, we use different pieces of equipment, right? But it's the same structure. And it's, I have this altruistic view that we really can help each other. Like, I know it sounds cliche, but be nice, right? Yeah. Just be nice and be kind and be helpful and network and help a brother out, you know, yeah. or a sister out. <laughs> and I think maybe it is a myth that, you know, people don't want to help or that they don't want to support you or they won't, or it's a little bit more cutthroat or clicky. Maybe it is a little bit, mm -hmm. but if you just hang on to the fact, do the right thing, be nice to people, be kind, do it from a place of goodness. I really feel like most people will help you. They will say yes when you ask a question yeah. and they, they will support you. Yeah. I'm trying to decide which one I want to comment on. And I only try to comment on one just because I feel like I go on for ages. So I'm trying to pick one <laughs> in my head, even though it's my podcast, I can comment on two parts of that. <laughs> ah, it's a tough one. I'm going to comment on both. Okay. The, first, let's start with the, the last one you finished with, because that's so great. It's about being a good person. And I'm going to finish that off with, if you have morals, stick to them. That's something that we don't see often in the industry is that you have morals, but yet you break them because you think it's going to lead to something else. You think that it's going to grow your business in something. And I will say that I try to stick to my morals all the time in terms of business and my own self. And one of those being with, with conferences too. Like I don't speak as much as I used to, and it goes with my morals. If I don't want to do business, I don't because it's, it goes against what I believe in being a good person. And with conferences in general, it's good that you mentioned about the whole behind the scenes of it, because you shouldn't have the mindset of, I'm going to speak at a conference because I'm going to make bank off of it. There's different things with conferences, the approach to it. A lot of people go to conferences for networking, to be able to go on podcasts, to do work with somebody else. And it's not so much about that one session you have that maybe you get paid for, maybe you don't, but you're going to build your brain, get your name out there. There's so many different areas of it that I know because I've worked for other education companies right. that you, if you are going as your own company, you probably are losing money with it. You're paying money for it. And so think about conferences as, is this right for me? Is this my right time to apply is do i need it right now or should i wait a little bit more grow my business grow my brand and then get the word out there because it's going to help me in that way but you're 100 percent right with conferences and it's good that other people say it well amy we're getting to that point where now let's promote you please all give right. the listeners information about your social media your websites all that kind of good stuff well, you can definitely just go to amynicotera.com. You can actually get to everything right from there. You can check out my virtual studio, join me for a class, jump online, or just reach out, shoot me an email and connect. If you want to learn more about E5 Collective, the website is literally the letter E, the number five, collective, all smushed in, dot com, e5collective.com. And you can learn more about the program. It'll take you to the online course. If you're super interested, you can find me on social, E5 Collective on Instagram, or just Amy Nicotera on Instagram and Facebook. Um, you can shoot me an email or a direct message, and I'll give you a discount code to the online course if love you it. reach out. Love it, love it. And I have to comment on the smushed because I use that word in a different podcast, and the and the host <laughs> made a comment about it that I can't. Whatever. Use the word. I I smush stuff. I even say the word moist. <laughs> we won't even go there, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, smush it up. Well, Amy, <laughs> thank you for coming on the podcast, sharing a lot of great information, and truly a pleasure to meet you to be able to connect with you again and have you as a guest. Thank you, Tyler. I appreciate it.